For those of you who just joined, we're just waiting for more committee members to uh, to show up. Probably start in the next five or so minutes. For those of you who just joined, we're just waiting a few minutes to let the other committee members uh, sign on. For those of you who just joined, we're just waiting a few minutes for other committee members to uh, sign on. Should be another two or three minutes. Rachel? Hi, Rachel, Patrice. Rachel? Hi, Terry. Can't hear you. 
There. There. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Rachel, can you hear me? I can hear you. You can't hear me. Okay. Mm -mm. Just a moment. I think you have to let me in. Rachel, I if you can't hear me either. You have to let me in. Hi, Alex. Hey, Terry. You want to try again? Can you okay. hear me? Can you hear me now? Okay. Sorry, I missed that. Could you say it again, please? Okay. Hi, everybody. Adding a few more people in the waiting room. Okay, it looks like we have quorum. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, it is 6.38 on a Friday. Um, I just want to welcome everybody. Uh, let's call to this meeting to order. Starting with, sorry. Uh, myself, Rachel Tobias here, Natalie. Oh, Natalie, sorry. Go ahead and unmute yourself again. Someone's dog is on. Yeah, I'm here. Still can't hear you. Maybe it's mine. Hold on. Oh, Natalie, are you there? Yeah, I'm oh, here. Good. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> um, uh, Terry Austin? Yeah. Can, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Thank you. Patrice? I'm here. Excellent. Uh, Alex? Here. Excellent. Uh, Patty Kirby, I didn't see on. Patty, you there? Uh, not present. And uh, Marsha is excused for this evening. Um, I would like to move to approve the minutes from both September 11th and October 8th. We didn't have quorum last month, uh, so we couldn't approve these minutes. Anybody second? Shut the fuck up. I'll wow. second those. Thank you. Okay, so updates for this month. Um, in terms of crime reporting. I want to taste my white sticky semen in your mouth. You want okay. to roll around my dickhead and all the sticky, salty semen in your mouth, man. You're going to swallow it down if I look at you. You know, lick my butt with your fucking tummy right tongue. Going on. Anyway, um, so Homburg. Come up my are, butt. I want it. Uh. Stand by, everybody. You want me to fuck your tight ass with my boots on? You want me to pound you hard? Okay. I think everybody's muted now. Um, home burglaries are up slightly. Um, Grand Theft Auto is still up. Uh, everybody, lock your cars, please. Um, there was a, a homicide in the hills uh, this past month. Um, I can't really um, report more than that. It is an ongoing investigation, only that it was a domestic violence case. Um, but for the most part, this month was fairly um, quiet uh, in terms of crimes. Um, in terms of um, public comment, I'm going to allow uh, one minute since we have so many people online. Um, if you have any public comment that is within the jurisdiction of this committee, uh, please raise your hand. 
and call on Meredith McNeil. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, perfect. Um, hi, I'm Meredith. I live in Toluca Lake and I do, uh, I'm not part of NoHo Home Alliance, but I work with them and do outreach in Studio City with the different encampments and uh, unhoused neighbors there. So I'm just calling essentially, uh, first and foremost, I just want to make it clear that I would like for the council to oppose council file 20 1376 regarding the criminalization of homelessness. And I would like to also just state for the record, um, my disapproval with council member Blumenfeld and the lack of construction of any new housing during or uh, within the district of Studio City. Um, as it stands now, homelessness within our community is a policy choice. It's not an accident that has just happened to us. So the policies that we are putting into place are keeping our neighbors unhoused, keeping them homeless and we are not providing anything for them that can create a space or create a path for them to get out of that. So I just wanna make it clear that I do oppose uh, council file 20-1376 and I yield my time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Scott Mandel, go ahead and unmute yourself. You have one minute. Uh, hi there. I just want to confirm, are we doing non-agenda items? Because the previous one was an agenda item. That is correct. It is non-agenda items. At okay. Time. Thank you. Um, I believe this is under uh, jurisdiction of this committee, uh, public safety, uh, gas-powered leaf blowers. I just wanted to say that I spoke with government affairs and they are working on a rewrite of the ordinance that has the giant methanol loophole in it. And I believe once it's done, um, it might be something uh, you guys might be interested in adding to your agenda since uh, gas powered blowers are a uh, uh, public safety issue. So uh, I'll get back to you when I have some more information from government affairs. And uh, sort of in conjunction with six but not related, uh, I created a interactive map in about two hours today of all the homeless encampments and I shared it with uh, some of the board and committees and perhaps that can be an agenda item on your next meeting. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Uh, is there anybody else? Since there's no more raised hands. Um, I'm going to have an update from CPAB, Patty Kirby. Do you have anything to report? Oh, as a, I'm unmuting you now. Try one. There you go. Unfortunately, our meeting is next week, so I don't have anything new to report. Um, I might have something that I can talk about when we get the board meeting, though. So, okay. Uh, is there anything sorry. from last month? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Nothing new, nothing new except for, you know, the usual budget stuff and, and I haven't gotten an update about that um, or anything from uh, the chief's apology or letter to the police, but I don't have the inside story on that either. So, sorry. Okay. I, hear, I see a couple of people who are saying I don't know how to raise my hand. If you go under participants, um, it will show the list and... Um, if you go on your name, it will it, it will show raise hand, lower hand. So I hope that helps everybody. Let's see if there's anybody. Um, does anybody remember how to, if you are a dial-in, if how to raise your hand? Is it star six? I believe that's it. Okay, uh, I see Rudy Melendez. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Thank you, Rachel. Minute. Thank you. Yes. Good evening. Um, I, I just wanted to make a quick comment. Uh, I've been following some of the incidents that uh, we see on next door and I hope that this committee would moving forward would like make an effort to really let those that are on the call tonight that live in the streets and neighborhood council boundary know about the specific incidents that are being reported. And we seem to glaze over that the, la the last week or last last time you guys met. I haven't been to a lot of meetings lately for this committee, but 
it seems to, to me that you just sort of skip over it without doing the neighbors and stakeholders that are here paying attention, concrete examples of the types of crime that are happening in Studio City. Crime is going up in Los Angeles. Now is not the time to defund LAPD. We need to rally around law enforcement. We want to live in a safe community, safe city. And I would hope that this committee would keep that in mind moving forward into the coming year. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Richard. And for the work you all do. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. Okay, uh, Sophie Bridges, you have your hand raised. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, um, I am a stakeholder. I um, graduated from North Hollywood High School and my teenage sister actually currently goes there now um, and have spent a lot of time in Studio City. It's a place that I really love. And I am just calling in tonight to strongly urge this committee to oppose um, this measure that's coming from Bob Blumenfeld's office um, in the strongest possible terms. I think it's a really cruel, inhumane and unconstitutional measure. Um, and as you are all concerned with public safety, I think it's really important um, to hear strong opposition to this measure, which uh, only leaves our unhoused neighbors and the entire community feeling less safe. Um, thank you, I yield my time. Thank you, Sophie. I'm just making sure we have uh, Matthew Wan. Go ahead and unmute yourself. You have one minute. Hi, so thanks so much for, for letting me speak here. Um, I live in um, in Studio City uh, here too in Aqua Vista. Um, and I just wanted to you know join Meredith, some other folks here, and and you know kind of give my you know perspective on that um, that that council measure. Um, you know, I just you know I do outreach here among a lot of the unhoused people in in our neighborhood here and. You know, just seeing the some of the sweeps here that happen and the the police presence and all the other folks that are there, um, I think you know if we if we go with this motion, we're really kind of putting our resources towards criminalization. And there's a kind of a zero sum there where you know we're taking money away from a long term solution. And you know, I, we're really condoning these sweeps. And I think for every person that gets swept out of, of our area, there's someone else that's going to get swept right in here. So I'd love to see us you know put our our resources towards a real long-term solution. Uh, thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much. I finally have a couple more people joining this meeting. Uh, Michael Connick, you have your hand raised. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Hear me. Yes. Thank you. I am a homeowner right off of Laurel Canyon. And I strongly oppose any effort to do further harm to our unhoused neighbors. The ordinance put forth by the council member is clearly unconstitutional. The court has said very clearly that housing stock must be available before you start doing any of these criminalizations. And frankly, I'm tired of my taxes paying to settle millions of dollars in lawsuits. I'm tired of paying the police with guns to interact with homeless people instead of doing real policing for us. And neighbors, after four years of Trump, I am tired of uncovering. One minute, sir. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, just to, to uh, let everybody know, because I, I, I know a bunch of people have joined who are not familiar with the procedures, but. Um, in terms of public comment, uh, we haven't moved to the next agenda item, which is number six, which I think is what everybody's kind of the the, the button issue that everybody's interested in talking about. Um, generally speaking, we would uh, discuss as a committee and then allow public comment after that um, to happen. So um, uh, it's a little bit out of order. I'm gonna allow it this time, but just in future, if you do join another public safety meeting, um, there there's, uh, there's public comment after an agenda item has been moved to the floor. Okay. Um, I have uh, someone 
last four digits, five, nine, three, eight. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Yes, hello. You have one minute. Uh, you, pro you probably should move on because all these callers are calling about the homeless item and they're gonna keep you on the phone or uh, your meeting all night long. So you, you probably should move along. They're advocates, they don't live in the area and they're just gonna keep bothering you and telling you this is criminalization when it's clearly, clearly not. Uh, the city council is finally, finally doing something to take care of the homeless issue. It doesn't go nearly far enough, but it's the best we can do at the moment. So you guys should be supporting it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I have a raised hand from caller 9193. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay, moving on. Uh, we are now at uh, agenda item number six um, to discuss uh, council file 20-1376. Um, this is obviously uh, a topic that everyone has interest in um, and it's very polarizing. Um, Terry, I don't know if you're still on. You you had brought this up as wanting to talk about it. Uh, I I've put in my own personal uh, public comment um, ever, since the motion was moved to later, but I didn't know if you wanted to talk a little bit about your thoughts. Is Terry still on? Terry? Terry? I'll text her. Okay. Mute. Can you hear me now, Rachel? Yes, I can. Yes, oh, there I you are. I'm, in a, I'm not in a good cell area. No, it's okay. Uh, yeah, uh, as uh, the gentleman who called in before, uh, just just previously, and, and talked about, um, you know, about council finally doing something. Um, unfortunately, yes, this is a very polarizing issue. However, um, when we don't have people calling in to complain about. Um, uh, the police and city not caring and not doing anything, we have people calling in saying, why isn't something being done? So it, it's very, very difficult. I, I think we have to point to the tiny homes project that's supposed to start in January in our area and to the attempt at a project room key to show that however mismanaged or not well thought out, it's, it's not that no one cares or no one isn't doing anything. So with this ordinance, um, I, I don't think it's as draconian as people uh, would like to um, paint it. And I think we hear the same rhetoric every time something is brought forward with the thought of what can we do to make our streets safer. This is the Public Safety Committee and every meeting for the last year, there have been residents, residents uh, who live in Studio City here calling in to tell us about different dangerous aspects that they've encountered, different da uh, dangerous incidents they've encountered um, on our streets. So um, I don't know that, I mean, we need to discuss this as a, as a committee and see what everyone feels about it. But I think jumping to it's um, a, a bad idea is a bad idea. Um, clearly, we're at a crisis point with the homeless on our street. And I think that we have to encourage council to keep addressing these issues. So um, I think that this um, is a, a motion that I personally feel is um, something that is unfortunately necessary at this point, but it goes hand in hand with wanting to continue providing services for people and continue to try to house people. But as we know, there are people who, whether there's housing or not, are choosing to live on the street. And unfortunately, we have a criminal element among them. It's not to say that is the case of all homeless people. It absolutely isn't. But we do have a problem that needs to be addressed. Thank you, Terry. 
Do I have anybody on the committee that has any other comments? Um, do we want to, do we want to have a motion that uh, urges the neighborhood council uh, to have a CIS? If uh, no committee members have any other comments, I'm gonna open the floor to public comment. Starting with uh, Zach, go ahead and unmute yourself. You have one minute. Yeah, hi, thank you. Um, I work over at uh, CBS Radford and um, I used to live in Studio City. Um, I no longer live there, prices got too high, but um, I really want you guys to consider that yes, this is, it is cruel and it doesn't provide any extra housing, but beyond that, the stipulations of this ordinance, all it does as council member Coretz pointed out is move the unhoused people away from the freeways. Well, where are they going to go then? They're going to move deeper into your residential neighborhoods, which is, I get the feeling, not something that you guys would like. Uh, Councilman Bonin also pointed out that this is putting the, the cart before the horse. Uh, there's just not enough housing. The whole thing is premised on a lie that there are services for these people when they're not. Um, Councilman De Leon pointed out this is the same exact failed measure that has mired LA in lawsuits that we end up paying for. So That's this is not right. a, yeah, this is not a solution. Thank you. It, it, it's really, it's, it's cruel and it's just not gonna do anything to help and it's probably. Sorry, I had to cut you off. Unfortunately, we're giving everybody uh, one minute. Uh, moving on to uh, Gina Viola, go ahead and unmute yourself. You have one minute. Thank you. Thank you for letting me speak tonight. My children go to school in Studio City. I live just over the hill on the other side. Um, it's really important that you understand when city council people are going to you to get your assistance with something, something is wrong. And this, this ordinance is absolutely criminalization and it is putting the cart before the horse like the last caller said there are no places for these people to go there are no housing units available to them so sweeping them away is just going to drive them someplace else a street or two over so the only thing we need to be doing is putting pressure on city council for housing. There are 100,000 vacant hotel and motel rooms in this city and 98,000 vacant un units of housing. I would urge you to put pressure on the city council to house people. Project Room Key is, is a terrific option. However, it fell, fell very far short of what they promised. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Um, continuing with public comment, uh, Peter Kloon, your hand is raised. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Yeah, I'd like to echo the comments of the last few callers as well. Um, you know, this this policy is far from limited, and to be fair, is not limited to freeways. Um, if you read the policy as put forward by the city attorney, it would allow the city to enforce a ban on sitting, lying, or sleeping in any public area city wide. Um, it is a remarkably broad ordinance. Um, it is a remarkably cruel ordinance. And most disappointingly, it's a continuation of what this city has done for decades. This is why we are in the situation we are in, because we've invested in criminalization um, and sweeping people away instead of providing the services and housing that we actually need to invest in to solve the problem. You know, this, this might, you know, erase someone from, from you know, your view, but it's, it's not gonna solve a problem. Um, and if you wanna do something that is serious and meaningful, um, those are the fronts that you should be working on. And this is just, just a remarkably cruel and misguided ordinance. And I hope you, um, you know, yeah, urge the council sure. to put in the CIS opposed to it. Thank you so much. Scott Mandel, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi there, I'd like to voice my uh, total support for this council motion and I hope uh, your committee supports it as well. As far as some of what I've heard, um, Judge Carter has made it pretty clear that people are not going to be living uh, under overpasses and pedestrian tunnels and such. 
And he is not using the word housing. He is using the word shelter. Shelter is a fraction of the cost. And as soon as uh, Los Angeles uh, city and county uh, get away from the failed nostrum of housing for all and move to shelters for all, people will be offered shelter and then the anti-camping ordinances can be enforced. If we stick to housing for all, we will see the H measures, we will see Prop 63, we will see no place like home, billions of dollars continually flush down the toilet and people living in toilets. It's time to go for shelters, cheap, basic, easy to build shelters. That was your time, sir, thank you. Um, give me one second. Rudy Melendez, go ahead and unmute yourself. Oh, sorry. Rudy Melendez, go ahead and unmute yourself. Thank you. Um, yes, ma'am. So I just uh, wanted to share my, you know, uh, comment about this issue. Obviously, people feel very passionate about it. We have to keep in mind we can't conflate the 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 really knee jerk emotional concepts behind services before sweeps, but we just simply want the city public work agencies, our county public work agencies, and our state public work agencies to maintain the integrity of, of our urban landscape wherever our homeless decide to bed down and that's not happening. And what's the frustration is in our community, we just wanna see a beautiful clean roadway and safe sidewalk to pass through. And in this case, oftentimes under freeway overpasses near schools, homes, businesses in our community and we need to get those areas cleaned up. And for that reason, I simply support what the city council is suggesting here. We, keep in mind that they're not going to enforce this if it passes. And we just want to get our neighborhoods cleaned up and all of the- That's your time, sir. Visual blight. Thank, Thank you, sorry. Uh, moving to Matthew Wan, go ahead and unmute yourself. Thanks so much for your time. Um, so I just, you know, kind of want to, to provide a little bit more context too. I mean, I think that, you know, again, we're putting our our sort of weight, if you are as a council behind this motion to, you know, law enforcement approach. And I think we need to think about what we'd be gaining from it. Um, I mean, I can tell you like the sweeps around the bridge home shelter happen every week. Um, and if the, the point is to get people away from there, you know, they, they come back every week. And, and the reason is because there's not a place to go. So I just think even if we support this approach, it just simply isn't effective at, at kind of the base um, goal of, of clearing out an area or, or, or getting, you know, homeless people out. So I think we need to put those resources of policing, you know, again, into a long-term housing solution. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Danielle Kol Kolker, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm a stakeholder in the area um, in response to some of the callers before me. Uh, you're kind of just, you're talking about like cleaning up your streets and the way your streets look, but these are people's lives we're talking about. These are people's belongings. Um, if people didn't like the way your home looked or the way you looked in their neighborhood, would they have the right to just come and tell you to leave violently? These are, this is people's lives. I, I'm sorry that you don't like the way your streets look, but like, frankly, I don't really care when people are being attacked by police, when people are being told that all of their items are worthless and they have to throw them all away. I mean, it's, it's utterly inhumane. I agree with the people before me in saying that we really seriously need to oppose this motion. City council has the power to house people. They have the power to take care of people and they're choosing not to. Um, to the comment about shelters being cheaper and housing being too expensive. Shelters are inhumane, especially during a pandemic. We're being told to stay home. We're being told not to be around people hundreds of beds smashed together in one room is not a humane way to treat people during this pandemic or ever. Um, and that's simply just not a solution. We're, we're not looking for the cheapest option. There's plenty of money, LAPD so budget through the roof. Uh, okay, well, right, next person, Carmen Elena de la Luz. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Go ahead and unmute yourself. You have one Yes, yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm indescribably saddened 
that this is being discussed as a public safety issue and wasn't it even brought up in your homelessness uh, committee earlier in the week. Uh, you know, even to the person that put it on the agenda and said that there is a criminal element among the unhoused population. You know, there's a criminal element amongst housed population too, but you can't just sweep them away. You know, people on the street, it's like a ref, they're refugees now. And if we continue to treat people inhumanely when there's not housing and in deference to the other caller who said that the judge keeps saying it's shelter. No, he specifically uses word housing. And when this motion was brought up at the hearing a week ago yesterday, and people said that there needs to be consequences, he said it's not going to happen unless there's housing. And he used that word housing. And then he said, get me the housing. We can't discuss criminalization unless there's okay, housing for people first. Thank you so much. Um, Nigel, go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, I just wanted to throw my two cents in here. Uh, I, I agree with the last caller and uh, some of the callers before me. You know, I think it's interesting that <clears throat> we keep hearing this thing from the, the people that support this motion. Well, we're not going to enforce it until there's housing. We're not going to enforce it until there's housing. Then why are we passing it before we have housing? Why are we so focused on getting this criminalization on the books if we're not going to enforce it? The reason is we are going to enforce it. That's a lie. And they just want to sweep people away. If they actually cared about housing, they wouldn't be going to neighborhood councils all across the city trying to draw up support for this because they know that they need to get it through. So this lie about, you know, we're, we're doing it for the greater good. I just don't buy it. And I just want to echo, definitely don't support this and push your council members to support housing over anything else. Thank you. Thank you. Sophie Bridges, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, um, I would really love to echo um, what the previous speakers have said about the cruelty and inhumanity of this motion, but I also just wanna say, practically speaking, we know that the science says that criminalization does not actually meaningfully deal with housing crises. Um, and furthermore, if we look at what's happening around the city, this motion already failed in city council once. Um, Blumenfeld is now trying to take it back and is going to city council, uh, neighborhood council after neighborhood council trying to get gather support for it. So I think it would actually really undermine the credibility of this neighborhood council to put support behind a measure that has already created so much consternation across the city. And I think this council could better actually address this issue um, and, and use the weight that it has to support housing, to support services. Um, and that would help all of the stakeholders in this room, like kind of suit the people who just want to get rid of homeless people and then suit the people who actually are really concerned about their unhoused neighbors well-being at the same time. Um, so I just really want to urge you to also think about this practically in terms of like, if the human rights argument doesn't work, the, the pragmatic argument that supporting this is really um, something that is not going to help your neighborhood council, um, you. you know, Thank continue you. to use your leverage. Thank you so much. Um, uh, last four digits in six, five, two, three, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm, um, I live in Studio City and, um, I just want to say to the caller who spoke about the push for shelter, you know, we are not going to be industry leading the city um, by converting parking lots into hastily built shanty towns to uh, in an effort to sort of rush to get homeless people off the streets. The city has raised well over a billion dollars to solve it or attempt to solve it. Our shelter programs don't work. Families are separated. Men and women, moms and dads are separated and the city has no long-term planning for it. Homelessness is already criminalized. Most people who are arrested on the streets are homeless. Homelessness is already a death sentence. Over a thousand people this year have already died for it. This is well over last year's numbers. And any effort to reference the ADA, a vast majority of our homeless are disabled. Um, the city is using their own sort of protections against them. Um, I just sort of urge this, this council, those listening, 
to sort of pay attention to the effects and who it's affecting. And it's not solving anything because um, there's only sort of. Sorry, we have a lot to go through. Natalie, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I'm in favor of this um, ordinance. I believe that we need to start protecting the city, the um, specifically businesses who have homeless outside of their businesses that interfere with their businesses. I'm concerned for the children who um, go to school near the um, underpasses and the places where the homeless are. And I feel like they need to be safe walking to and from school so that we feel like a community and kids can do that. Um, I'm concerned about um, the disabled who have a difficult time using the sidewalks. I'm concerned about pedestrians who have to walk into the streets to avoid the homeless people. Um, and I'm concerned about the homeless people who are now position themselves in places where it's really dangerous for homeless people to be under these um, underpasses where you're coming off the freeway and they're just, you know, feet away from being struck by a car. I've seen them walking through um, the intersection of the streets while it's busy at night where you could barely see them going from one side of the freeway to the other. Um, in some parts of the city, they're actually in the median between. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. I have one more hand from Judge Carter. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Yeah, hi, thank you. Um, you know, I think listening to these public comments, some of them are sort of these remarkable sort of mask off moments um, where people are saying that, you know, they really want to preserve and get rid of things like visual blight um, or like Natalie, the last caller, where the last thing that she mentions is the well-being of our unhoused neighbors who she wants to criminalize their just basic existence. Um, you know, you guys are a public safety committee um, and the people in our city who are most at risk of being victims of crime and everything are our unhoused neighbors, right? The solution is not to sick the LAPD on them. The solution is to offer services and housing, right? And just trying to sweep people away and lock them up or find the cheapest possible solution that gives you some sort of legal reason to then put those policies into place is terrible. I mean, it shows a complete um, Thank you so much. Okay. Um, do we have anybody from the committee who feels like we should be moving forward with this as a motion? Uh, it's Patty. Um, I would like to have some time further to discuss it with the uh, other two committees, the homeless and the government affairs committees before making a, a decision. My, my input anyway. Does anybody second? Who else is on the committee that's here? Patrice, Alex, Natalie. Terry must be driving. Nat oh, Natalie, go ahead. I'm in favor of moving forward with the, um, with the ordinance. Okay. Uh, Terry, go ahead and unmute yourself. Terry? Yes, can you hear me now? Now I can, go ahead. Yeah, um, can I make a comment about this? Or did you want just a second? Uh, neither, I mean, I mean uh, um, if, if nobody is going to second, then-, then I agree with Patty. I agree with Patty that it'd be good to talk, speak to the other committees. Um, and I was gonna make a comment, but I can hold the comment till you know, another day when we, after we've discussed with the other committee. You know, I uh, unfortunately didn't let Steve, the homelessness chair, uh, know about this meeting until uh, earlier this morning. I've, I've been very busy. So uh, it's my fault, uh, truly, that he wasn't able to join this evening. Um, 
you know, I kind of feel the same that we should, I, I, I would like to second it because I feel like this is such a hot, hot button issue and uh, a lot of people feel very, very strongly about it, understandably so. Um, the one thing I didn't hear was, you know, ad advocacies for the disabled, that this also affects them. And, um, you know, I just, as someone who grew up with someone with a quadriplegic, like it's, it's, it's a real um, issue that, you know, they can't just go into, a, uh, you know, into the street to, to avoid um, foot traffic, uh, excuse me, to avoid um, uh, encampments. So um, anyway, I, I, I moved to second and uh, we'll move forward. Um, does anybody from the committee have any announcements before we close? Okay, well then um, thank you everybody for joining and for uh, for tuning in and, and giving us your uh, sentiments. Uh, we are journeying at 718. Thank you so much.